How's it going everybody? So today what I'm going to be talking about is when to create views versus versus when to create tables in Airtable. And I'm going to show you that with a personal example and then a mapping example and then more of like a work related example in that. So if you haven't met me before, my name is Ben Green. I'm the owner of Optimize IS and we help businesses set up systems just like the ones that I'm about to show you in Miro. So without further ado, I'm going to jump right into that. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to be primarily using Miro as a visual uh, it's a, just a visual tool so you can visualize the database. And this is what's called an ERD, a very basic ERD, not necessarily the most technical one. Then also what I'm going to show you is an example in a Airtable base, which is a wedding manager for me and my fiance. So in here in Airtable, what we have actually in here in Miro is, an, like I said, an ERD. And what essentially all of this is right here. This is an ERD for my business, and this is a system that I'm creating live on the YouTube channel. I'll give you a hint as far as like how you can watch the whole build at the end of this video. But right here, these are all different tables in Airtable. So each of these CRM activities, contacts, company, invoices, toggle, work tickets, these are all different tables inside of what will be the new Airtable base for my business. And each of these, like contact companies, they all have different relationships between them. And they're all, I think they would probably be called data objects, but they're different class classifications of data. Like a company is different than a contact. A contact is different than a CRM activity, but they're related. So there's three different types of relationships real quick. They're one-to-one, -one, one one-to-many, and many-to-many. -many. One company might have many contacts. One contact might have one CRM activity. One CRM activity might have many contacts. Uh, one company might hopefully has many invoices. One company hopefully has multiple time, many time entries being tracked on it. So those are a few of the different relationships. And that's how I think in terms of all of these different tables right here. So if you're interested in a little bit more of this, now I'm going to get into views versus tables. So where I really differentiate views is where or I guess where people differentiate views wrong is when you get into the different types of the data in the tables. So a lot of times what I'll see people do is they'll create different tables for different types of companies. So maybe you have vendors and actual companies. And there are certain databases where I do split up vendor companies and regular, regular like client prospect companies. But that's a distinction that you have to make. Another time when I see this is like CRM activities. So in tools like close.com or other CRMs, you can have a ton of, it's just a CRM activity. You can add custom fields to each one. So in Airtable, when you have a CRM activities table, how do you know when to create a new table versus when to create a new view? And that's exactly what I'm going to be going into this uh, in this video. So there are a few things that you need to figure out when you're doing all of this. And it's primarily just based around how you currently work, uh, as well as what's going to be the most effective way of you working. And are you willing to make those changes? So for example, in invoices and payments, there is one way where you could split those up into two separate things. Although for me, an in, a payment is always made on an invoice. There's never a payment without an invoice. So for me, I put those in the same table. For me, all my companies, so I've seen people put their have their prospects in one system and their clients in another system. With the way that this is going to be set up right here, those would be in, in both. And you're like, okay, well, how do you tell the, the difference? So one of the things that I would have on a company's table, and this is where I'd get into views. So this, was, this originally came up from a question a client asked me, how do I know when to create views? How do I know when to create tables? So when I go to create views is I have a pros I have like clearly defined kind of like work streams within my business. So it's at certain times I'm prospecting and then at certain times I am just helping out customers or at certain times I'm billing customers. So in my system that I'm creating, I need a place to do my prospecting tasks, know who I need to prospect with, know when the last time I talked with them. I also need to know that for, active clients. So when was the last time an email exchange was exchanged? When was the last time a Slack message was exchanged? When was the last time that I had a call with them? 
all that kind of stuff is very useful as well as like managing information around billing, managing information, uh, information on how many hours they've purchased, how many hours are remaining. As you can see, those are a few of the fields here. Uh, where people get caught up is there's certain fields that only apply to one section of these people. And I think this is very evident in company and CRM activity. So for companies, there's certain fields that are only relevant to companies that are clients that have already like signed on and are working with us. Like any of the hourly fields, those are only relevant to people who are actively working with us. But I think what's really nice about Airtable is you can still segment those by just using these things up here. So you can hide the fields that you don't want to see. You can filter out the people who are not currently prospects. You can only filter to show only the people who are in the closed one stage or who are in a, who are like have a checkbox that says they're a client. So another good example is CRM activities. In this system that I'm building, I'm putting all CRM activities in the same spot. And this can be troublesome for some because you're like, okay, if I look at a few different types of CRM activities, a text message has a few fields. It just is linked to the contact and it has the text of the, what the text message said and maybe the direction of the text message. Did they text me or did I text them? And then that is different than an email. An e email has what the message was, which direction was it? But it also has who is the to, who is the from, what was the subject, what was the CC, what was the BCC, were there attachments, all that kind of stuff. So you might be like, and then I guess to take it even further, an audit call recap for me, I do an audit call, an initial audit call with any new client. There's a link down in the description. People book a call from the YouTube videos and they apply to work with us, scheduling a call with us. And I do a recap on those and there's very specific questions that I ask and I get feedback on. But I really don't mind having all those in the same CRM activities table and just having each different CRM activity use certain fields. Because it makes it a lot easier for reporting to say this was the last time I had a CRM activity with this person. And also in the CRM activities table, what I would have would be different views. So in this table, what I would have would be different views. So I would have emails. I would have audit call recaps. I would have text. And actually, I'm not going to be doing text in this system. But that's the idea is I would have views for each different type of communication. Same thing for companies. I'm going to make this quite a bit bigger. So here in companies, I'm gonna have views for quite a few different things. I'm gonna have a view for clients. I'm gonna have a view for active clients. I'm gonna have a view for all time clients. So anybody who's ever paid me money ever. I'm gonna have another view for prospecting. So this would be anybody not in who hasn't made it past closed one, closed loss. Uh, so those would be people who are in one of my first three or four deal stages and they're actively like they could be working with me sooner or later. So these are all views and I just keep these in here. And if I like currently in my current system, I have my CRM and then I split out part of it into a project management system for clients. And so for me with clients, I would be syncing the Actually, it's all-time clients to that base. But it's essentially the same table. Um, another thing here is I might have for views so that I can differentiate between invoices and payments. I'm going to have invoices. And this is going to be what's called account receivable. So these are unpaid invoices. I'm going to have paid invoices. And then I might have another view where I view it group by month, month. And then I might have another view that's the last 90 days. So those are a few different areas of views that I might have. And so I, to get back to the original question is like, when would I go to create views versus when would I not create views? When would I go create a table? The information needs to 
be categorized into something like for me in this system, it's communication, contacts, companies, invoices. And then if I just want to see a subset of one of those pieces of information, then I would go and create a view for that subset of information. I would only show the fields that I want to see, and I would only show the filters so that I only see the records that I want to see as well. And then beyond that, it's just how it looks. Like, do you want to see it in a Kanban view? Do you want to see it in a grouped view? Or what exactly does that look like? So another good example of this is in the system that's behind this, which is in a wedding tracker. And again, I am going to get to the system where you can see how I'm going about creating this system in Airtable and software, all that at the end of the video. But here in this wedding tracker, we have different, these, this started out as vendors, although it's not necessarily following the strictest guidelines as far as how would I call this data, structured data. So this used to be vendors, and so we used to have just have vendors in each one of these. We have caterers, as you just saw there. These are all of our notes about caterers, some, some notes about a, a few vendors, and these are all just different categories. So these are categories of catering, all of our notes on catering. Another view that we created was just for photographers or just for videographers. So these are a few of the different views that we created rather than in Excel, what we had was we had a view for photographers, a view for videographers, a view for caterers, a view for cake, transportation, all of these. But here, instead of having having to scroll through 30 different tables, we can just have this little section over here, navigate to what we want to, or see all of them together. And I think that's one of the best parts about having these all in the same table, is you can see all of them together. So I hope you gain value out of this video. If you are curious about building that system that I was showing you and seeing how I map that out, how I think about mapping out systems and mapping out the different tables, and then over on what you didn't see was all the automations that will make the CRM and make the CMS work, uh, you can check out this video right here on the end screen. It's gonna pop up probably like right over here. And you can go click on that video and you can go learn about mapping out all of these fields in Airtable. It's gonna be a CRM and a customer management system in Airtable for a service-based business for my business. So if you're curious about learning about how to build a system like that, go check out this video right here and you can get the deep dive on all, all things mapping in Airtable. You can learn all about relational databases. So hope to see you there. Go click on that video right there and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.